Hey guys, Pogo here, and welcome to the next episode of Bucket Coding. In this episode, we're going to take a break from learning a new feature of uh, Bucket, and we're going to focus on one of the most important skills that you will need to know as a programmer, and that is dealing with bugs. Java uh, has a great feature in that when you get an error, it comes with a stack trace. If you've ever seen an error in your console, it's a big long, long, big, long block of stuff that you probably don't understand, and today I'm going to show you exactly how to read it and pinpoint your errors, and I'm going to also explain exactly what each one means and the easy ways to prevent them. Uh, I've taken this nicknames plugin from... Um, an episode that happened a while ago, and I took a fully working one, and I modified it, so it is now full of errors. And we're going to go through and look at each different error that comes up, uh, and then I'll explain it, and then we will fix it. Uh, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and export the plugin. As you can see, it is a plugin with some code and plugin.yml, and... So let's go ahead and export this, and we're going to call it nicknames. And when we go ahead and start up the server, we should get an exception almost immediately. All right, let me make this bigger so that the exception's easier to see. And as you can see, this right here, which I will highlight, is a this is called a stack trace. Basically, um, when, an, when an exception is generated, all calls before that um, are put in the stack, and then you can see them. So, um, let's say that you had a method inside of a class, and when you call that method, you're calling the method from the class, and then maybe that method in turn will call another method, which might call another method, which would then cause the error, and it allows you to step back through and see exactly what happened in order, in order to get the issue. So, the way that a typical um, stack trace will work is you'll get a message, something like this, then you'll get the actual... Um, exception name and then like another message so this is just saying it couldn't load and then this is uh, the actual stack trace so this is an invalid description exception and it says invalid plugin dot yml and then as you can see this stack trace isn't very helpful because everything's happening internally and it's not happening um, with our plugin but as you can clearly see it says invalid plugin dot yml and down a little bit further um, it's a file not found exception. Jar does not contain plugin.yml. So in this case, we can say, and I'm going to keep a um, comment with all the exceptions, and this is, um, so we're going to call this one an invalid description exception, and that means no plugin.yml or plugin.yml is in the wrong place. And in this case, I took this plugin.yml, which is uh, valid, and I put it inside of the package, whereas it's supposed to be inside of the source folder. So I've gone ahead and moved it outside of the package, I dragged it to the source folder, and put it in. So let's export this and see what's next. Let's go ahead and reload. And you'll see that we have now gotten another error. So here is the stack trace. Now, as you can see, this one is also internal, so it's not, you can't really look through the stack, which we, we will look through the stack soon, and I'll show you exactly how to do that. Um, but as you can see, we're getting an invalid plugin exception. It says, cannot find main class me.pogo629.nicknames.nicknames. And then down a little bit further, you see that it is caused by a class not found exception. And a class not found exception is, um, it's saying it could not find this class me.pogostick29.nicknames.nicknames. So in this case, if you look, the class is actually in pogostick29dev. So the plugin.yml has the wrong class. And in this case, a class not found exception is most likely caused, if it happens immediately on startup, it is most likely caused um, because uh, of the wrong package and class name in plugin.yml. Now, as you can see, we can go in here and make that Pogosic 29 dev. And now, if we go ahead and export it, that error should not show up anymore. 
So if we go ahead and reload it, you'll see that we get our next error. And this is going to be invalid plugin says main class does not extend Java plugin. That right there is very helpful. And then you'll see it's caused by a class cast exception for class um, nicknames. So if you get a class cast exception for um, does not extend um, Java plugin, then you that means that your main class does not extend Java plugin. So we want to go ahead and say extends Java plugin. Import that, and now I can actually comment out all of these lines that I had commented before. And import bucket. All right. Now if we go ahead and export it, that error should go away. As you can see, it did um, turn on this time without any exceptions, but there is still um, plenty more problems with this. Uh, the command that we've set up is nick, or nickname, or n. So let's go ahead and try out the command. We tried nick, and as you can see, we have gotten a, another exception. Now this one, we can actually read through the stack a little bit. As you can see, we got a command exception, unhandled exception, and if we go down a little bit further, uh, this is the helpful one. The exceptions that come from bucket are not as helpful as the ones that come from Java. But as we can see, it's a class cast exception, and it says colored console sender cannot be cast to player. If you ever see this error, it means that I, I'm casting player to sender, I'm basically saying when this command is executed, the person that sends it is definitely a player, which means that if the console sends it, then this assumption is wrong, and then you get this error. So if you get a um, class cast exception for A could not be cast to B, I believe that's the format, it's cannot be cast to, cannot be cast to B, then that's going to be um, do a not instance of check. So what we need to do here is we need to say if exclamation point sender instance of player. Before we can assume that the sender is a player, we need to make sure that if they are, that we handle this correctly. So we're going to send the message chat color dot red, and then we're going to say uh, the console cannot have a nickname and then we're going to return true and now if we go ahead and export this and reload and now we do nick you'll see the console cannot have a nickname and that error has gone away so whenever you cast something unless you're 100 percent sure that it that the cast is safe and even just to be safe um, you would want to use a not instance of check to make sure that if it's not what you think it is that you take care of it now we're going to actually fire up Minecraft because um, the rest of these bugs will have to do with actual players using it since the uh, we've already taken care of the console and the console can't use it. So let's go ahead and give Minecraft one second to set up and then we're going to start it up. Go to local host. Alright, so we are now on the server and let's go ahead and try the nick command. Now as you can see we've gotten an internal error internal er error has occurred while performing or attempting to perform this command. Now of course you don't get any information in the um, client on the server but if you check out the console you will see that we get a nice stack trace and this is where um, we can actually read through the stack a little bit so we're getting a command exception and that's not too helpful but down here we're getting a string index out of bounds exception and the string index out of range is a negative one so the issue let's start at the bottom so there's this execute plugin command which is does not apply to us but then you can see that something happened at me.pogostick29 dev dot nicknames dot nicknames dot on command and so it's inside of the onCommand method, and you'll see it's in nicknames.java at line 39. 
So if we go ahead and look at line 39, you'll see it says nick is equal to nick.substring at 0 to nick.length minus 1. Now, this issue is a little bit more confusing, but basically what's happening, if you look above, this nickname is no arguments. I did not specify any arguments. So this nickname string is just an empty string. So when you try to subtract 1 from 0, it's negative 1, and you can't have a substring from 0 to negative 1. There's nothing at position negative 1. So if you ever see this error, or more commonly, you would see an array index out of bounds exception, and I'll show you that as well. If you were to actually do nick is um, equal to args 0, and you did not specify any arguments, that would give you an array index out of bounds exception, because the, there um, are no arguments, and you're trying to access an argument that doesn't exist. So, if you get a string index out of bounds exception, or an array index out of bounds exception, then you're going to um, make sure enough arguments have been supplied. So in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to say if args.length length is less than uh, 1, if they, if they have supplied less than 1, or we can say if it's equal to 0, if they have none, then we just need to tell them send message uh, in red then we're going to say enter a name and then we're going to return true so now let's go ahead and try it again we fix that string index out of bounds exception and if we go ahead and reload the server and try nick again you'll see it says enter a name instead of giving us that error now the last thing that we are going to check out is we're going to actually try this um, chatting so let me try saying hello and as you can see it says null hello which actually did not throw an exception as I thought it would um, but basically you can see that it says null which you can go check and see we have an async player chat event e and then we're going to let me just show you. I'm just going to add this one line. Um, there are new no pointer, and you don't have to understand what this means. But I'm just going to say if um, get config dot get string. Sorry. Basically, what I'm saying is um, it, there's no exception that's being thrown. But you can use a similar to an exception. If you know that it's null, then you can go through and then you can say, okay, it's probably happening in the player chat event. And then you can see e.getPlayer. We know that that's not null because if the event is called, then there is a player. The only thing that could possibly be null is getconfig.getString for e.getPlayer.getName, which means that the configuration probably doesn't contain it. So what we would want to say is we want to say if, if exclamation point get config dot contains e dot get player dot get name or rather if it does ugh, what happened there we go so we want to say if it does contain that then we want to actually use it because um and that is the correct path so if we go ahead and export it again. Now if I say hello, you'll see that since I did not have a nickname, it um, did not use it. But if I say um, Nick, and I'll say um, Pogo, then if I go ahead and say hello again, you'll see that it says it with uh, Pogo, because the nickname in the configuration file was not null, so, that, um, so it did actually use that. Uh, one last thing is, um, I kind of assumed that that would throw an exception, um, which I guess I probably should know that it didn't, but I just want to quickly walk through um, looking through a stack one more time because that's the most important part. And we're going to use the string index out of bounds exception. We already remember that we tried to get 
um, something at position negative 1, which of course is invalid, but you would want to walk through um, starting, you'll get this caused by, and then under that, starting right below it and going down, is the order in which the errors occurred. So somewhere inside of substring, this exception was thrown, but if we go back, we can see that this part is important. In the file nicknames.java at line 39, something happened that eventually caused this error. And then if you look below that, something on plugin command.java line 34 inside of the execute method caused the error because the execute was called, which then called on command, which then called substring, which then threw the string index out of bounds exception. Uh, so you can trace it back, and it's very helpful to know even the exact issue and the exact line. So that's all for this video. It's just a basic um, quick guide to running down, you know, going through exceptions. I'm going to quickly add the null pointer exception, and this is going to be um, attempted to use null object. Uh, instant, am I going to spell it right? Instantiate it. Well, I guess I did. Alright, so that's all for this video. Just a quick rundown of how to read an exception, or stack trace rather. They're very, very helpful for, um, you know, figuring out exactly where an error is, because it literally tells you a quick description of what it is, and it has to do with the string index out of bounds, it tells you something with a negative one, so one of the arguments was bad, it's out of range, and then you can see the exact line where the issue happened, and then I was able to immediately figure out that the issue was that the length was zero, so length minus one is negative one, and that doesn't work, and I made sure that they specified at least one argument, of course. And you might want to also say, um, if args 0 dot equals um, nothing, or we want to say if args dot length length ugh, is equal to 1, because you would want to say, because if they, you would get the same issue, um, if they only specified one argument and it was nothing because then you would get the negative one and uh, it wouldn't work so that would you know take care of all the issues if you guys are interested in uh, stuff like this which of course it's very important if you want me to do another one maybe a little bit more in depth and also explain some more exceptions if you've ever come across any other exceptions that you don't understand or any stack traces that you can't comprehend if you have any questions or if you want to let me know how many errors you noticed before I began going through them, feel free to leave a comment. So always subscribe if you want to see more. Comment with what you want to learn. If you like this video, click the like button, and I will see you guys soon. Bye.